Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today I want to talk to you about some important recent developments in the game. Yeah, I think most of us are focused on the Gambit raids and this character right here. I have a smaller Gambit than many people. I will say it's been interesting for me to see that even though Scopely has radically increased the price of uh, offers for Gambit, I mean, he's so out of whack compared to any other character offer, uh, I have been seeing, even amongst sort of mid-tier alliances, people who ordinarily aren't big spenders, they're clearly spending a fortune on Gambit. I am routinely running up against five- and six-star Gambits, people who must have spent hundreds of dollars on the character, which is their right, but I will say it's, it shows that Scopely's, <laughs> Scopely has uh, made a smart call. But I think, in many ways, that is you know the problem of the moment. But the reason that it takes on a greater significance is because of something that I don't think people are focused enough on, right? And that is this message right here. We got this in our inbox uh, just a few days ago, and it says, you know, Strike has solved this puzzle about Apocalypse. And the bottom line is this. If you want Apocalypse, you have to have a full team of Darkhold and a full team of Unlimited X-Men. And this is a huge thing deal in my opinion an absolute huge deal you know i think everyone assumed that to get apocalypse I, in fact i don't think assumed i think that we were told up front uh, you're gonna need all four horsemen okay and that already by the way was a huge leap forward in this game right you know to get a character you know when we look at the legendaries in this game right to get um you know a regular legendary like adam warlock you needed five characters I you know you have five characters to get to fourteen you're gonna get this you can get this character at seven stars, no problem, and you know that that you know that was just where we were at pretty recently less than a year ago in this game, now you know for to get a character like Morgan Le Fay, you I needed to have two teams built up right and pretty large if you wanted her at seven stars for sure but no matter what you you know you could get away with one team. Maybe, but you had to have it pretty big, right? To have your web warriors big enough to be able to uh, get her at a decent star level. Otherwise, uh, you needed two teams, and that was generally the, the preferred result, right? Well, for Rogue, it could be up to three teams. We don't know yet exactly what you're going to need, but you it's fair to say that for if you really want to get, and, and I can just go back here, if you want to get a large Rogue, you know, you may not just need the a force, young Avengers, and um, uh, you know maybe some Inhumans, but you're going to need a whole variety of other characters. There's already been some data mines with details about what you're going to need for Rogue. But with this news, the latest news shows us is that you're going to need something even more than that. You're going to actually have to build a team that you otherwise could have skipped. Right? I mean, already I would say that. This system, the Scourge system, is a way to force us to build a bunch of teams you would have skipped, right? You would have skipped Dark Hunters. You would have skipped A-Force. You're going to be building those teams potentially now. Many people would have skipped Young Avengers. That's just a war defense team. But now, young, Unlimited X-Men, a lot of people, myself included, you know, aren't that focused on building up Crucible teams. This is a team outside of Crucible. It's just, eh, right? Not that great outside of Crucible. And yet, we have to build the full team. And I want you to think about what that means for this game and what that means going forward, right? We now are going to have a character in this game later this year, Apocalypse, that is going to require four, not just four full teams to get him, right? You're going to need Darkhold. You're going to need Unlimited X-Men. You're going to need the two other teams, I would assume, for the other two horsemen. But then you're going to need all the teams you needed to unlock those, those horsemen, right? You're talking... You know, we needed two teams to unlock Morgan Le Fay. Then you need her team. That's three teams. Most of us would have built up Darkhold probably anyway, right? That's the arena team. But here, you need two to three teams to unlock her, and you need this team. So that's potentially, right, potentially, you know, you know, that four teams you need here. You know, to be realistic, maybe, maybe three. Plus you needed two plus the next one for the last was you need like eight already you may need at the end of this whether it's you know even if you can skimp by on 12 teams 10 teams if you're really lucky um but that, that's a lot of teams we're going from a point 
in this game where you needed one team to unlock the best character in the game. Right when Adam Warlock came out, or when Omega Red, these were the top legendaries in the game. Maybe not the best characters in the game, but the top legendaries in the game. And you're go we're going from that all the way to needing, you know, seven, eight, ten, twelve, you know, so many teams that you need just to get one character. It, it really, from my perspective, we have gone. It reminds me of in Spaceballs, ludicrous speed, right? <laughs> It is just, it is, we've gone far past where we were before. There's some, for some reason, the devs in this game are trying to accelerate everything on us. And I think it is going to have to have an impact on how we play the game. You know, I've been counseling everybody for a while. Now that we have the scourge system and we don't know what's going to come next and they're throwing so much at us and they're trying to incentivize us to build all sorts of characters we don't need, that you should just be very careful in Horde gear, Right. Because, you know, the, to me, the, this, this um, Gambit raid is just the latest in a series of tactics from Scopely to Gilda, get us to, buy, to build up worthless, worthless crap, right? You know, maybe whether it's Pocket Dimension, Avengers Tower, whatever the, you know, Nowhere Heist, which was uh, definitely a heist, I would say. Here, this is the latest thing where it's like, okay, here's a bunch of random characters that we're going to call clubs or diamonds. You're going to have to build them up. And I, and I will tell you, I will verify, if you have a huge roster like mine, and particularly if you're willing to blow Blue Iso uh, to change characters to healer, it's it's not hard. But if, you, you know, so basically, it's it's an incentive to wail out, it's an incentive to build up, and to, an incentive to use your resources. You know, now, particularly with these gating of, you know, this character's, you know, the character of Gambit is now the most expensive character we've had in Marvel Strike Force, you know, and now he's, I guess, required for a legendary. And they don't make the legendary requirements farmable. Um, they're not, you know, they're really slowed down on making characters farmable. I think what we have to do, if you want to play this game and stay rational and sane and not get, not, you know, get, get upset, we're going to have to tone down our expectations for the characters we unlock. In other words... If you always were expecting to unlock a legendary at five stars on the first pass, you may not get a legendary that big on the first pass this time. You may not get a five star apocalypse this time, and you have to be excited. You have to be okay with that. If you were used to getting a seven star legendaries, you may just this time it just may not be in the cards unless you want want to spend more, do more, push more, right? Pour more resources in. I think the reality is, you know, I've always said when I've given advice to new players that Scopely doesn't give us all the resources that we need to do everything we need to do. That's always been the case. But the they are ratcheting up what they throw at us constantly. Um, and they made some small screen time improvements recently, which I'll take. I'll take 15 minutes back of my life a day. But it, it's it's sort of beyond that in terms of resources, right? It's it's just getting more and more expensive. They're, they're requiring more and more resources. The the gold that's coming in is just not enough. The to, the gold changes are not enough to to compensate for that. And so, I I think realistically, to be sane in this game, you have to accept, you have to adjust your expectations downward. I think in addition to playing tight. As I always suggest, I think you should continue to hoard. I would, you know, bring up gold, you know, get your get your gold spender milestones every day, okay? Certainly do what you got to <laughs> these deals, these supposed deals. Get your gold spender milestones, you know, get up to whatever level you think is, you know, important for those. But then from my perspective, you know, other than that, I would just hoard your gear, wait to see how people do in the scourge, look, wait for some testing, get feedback, then invest in those teams for Scourge. And we don't know. For unlimited X-Men, in my opinion, get the shards and only invest gear in this team and gold in this team if you are going to do it anyway. If you're going to do it anyway, if it's going to help your roster in some other way, great. Otherwise, my view is let's wait and see what you need for Apocalypse. Let's see how high you need these teams. You just need to have them or you need to have them geared. What is it going to really take? Uh, how big do they have to be? Can you get away with one character bigger than the others? You might as well wait and see. Don't overcommit your gear because no one has enough gear right now. Be careful. Be cautious. 
and lower your expectations. I think that's the only way you're going to be able to manage the trap that Scopely is throwing for us, the ludicrous speed that they are now taking the game. All right, guys, I, I don't like the video, so just don't do anything. But you can comment if you're angry at me. Uh, comment below. If you're angry, sad, happy, mad, whatever, put it below or go to my Discord. That's linked below. You can also go to my Twitch stream. That is linked below, too.